across Canada. Backyard inventors are dreaming big and risking it all for their ideas. There's nothing else out there like my product. I would love to get an infomercial. It's pretty darn exciting to take an invention from kitchen table to a ready-to-go level. Made a prototype in my garage. I hope it gets to the next level. Innovation expert Doug Hall will choose one of these inventors to take to his inventions boot camp, Eureka Ranch. Has this been done before? I think it's got a lot of potential. I'm not saying there's not a market. I just personally don't care for it. The chosen inventor will work with Doug to retool their idea before pitching it to a big business. It's a once-in-a-lifetime shot at turning their invention into a multi-million dollar business opportunity. <music> Doug Hall has invented his way to the top of the world. At least 18 products in your home were shaped by this man. Fortune 500 companies pay big bucks to develop their ideas with his innovation team. But today, he is searching for an everyday inventor to take their invention to market. There is nothing more fun than taking an ordinary Canadian and helping them see the possibilities of how they can go, not just from Canada, to the world with their idea. Tanya Archdahl is hoping she can take her unique invention to women everywhere. My invention is lift and lock bra bands. Okay. And basically you insert the bands into the bra buckles and it prevents the sliders from moving at all. The problem with bras on the market today is the material is it's elasticity. So it stretches and after a while you're going to find that you're constantly adjusting these straps or your straps are going to be slipping off. There's nothing else out there like my product that actually goes into the bra strap itself. I've given them to about 100 women, test marketed. I had amazing results. So what have you done with this so far? Well, I've patented it, and I've actually got my first order was from Germany online. So I haven't advertised, awesome. but awesome. yeah, it's amazing. Next up, inventor Steve Smith has a simple hands-free solution for keeping a drink on hand. I've got the hands-free drink holder called the Must Clip. Let's go a drink clip or you must clip it. Okay. This fits bottles of water, clips on your belt, can clip on the golf cart, on a lawn chair, pretty much wherever you want. Now these are pretty involved prototypes. How'd you get these? I'm an injection mold maker. I've oh, got really? a, I've got a CNC machine in my shop. I've got an EDM machine in my shop. So you have all this equipment sitting somewhere? In my garage, 968 square feet of machine shop. You have a machine shop in your garage? Yep. I did all this from thought to product in my garage. Wicked. What other products do you make? For clients, you do contract work for them? No, not, not no. anymore. Being an injection mold maker, I lost it all to overseas. Oh, really? Yeah. It's impressive what he's trying to do. And it is sad what's happened to a lot of people with machine shops have suffered. What's neat is that he's trying to rebuild. Question is, is there a real business here? Backyard inventor Ginger Coons is hoping Doug can lend a hand to turn her glove invention into a lucrative business. I have made a pair of LED bike gloves. LED bike gloves. Yeah. Okay. So the problem it solves is? When cyclists use a normal headlight, they're just a spot on the road. Okay. And so it solves that problem by actually marking out in light at night and in bad conditions. One rainy night, I was biking on a busy street with my headlights, and I almost got doored by someone who was stepping out of his parked car. So the next day I went out, bought some electronics, bought some gloves, and said, I'm not gonna have that happen again. And it works with a soft switch on the thumb and forefinger. So as these connect, it, exactly. it goes. Has this been done before? I've yet to encounter it. So gloves that light up, you've yeah. not seen? I haven't, no. Yeah, I've seen quite a nothing. few. From a technology standpoint, yeah. this has constraints. And while LED is a very efficient technology, mm -hmm. I think that there are other technologies Absolutely. that would be a bigger leap mm -hmm. for this. So I'm going to have to say no. I would love it if he thought it had some potential. They do what I need them to do. And if someone else is doing it better, that's fantastic. And I hope to ride on his gloves in the future. Inventor Tanya Archdahl is trying to sell Doug on the market potential for her bra accessory that keeps straps firmly in place. So what do these sell for? One pair for $5.99 or five pairs for $19.99. Okay. At $5, this isn't going to happen. She's got the first step to an invention. She's got to take this and make it into a complete bra that she can then sell. I'm going to say no to you because I think it's not there. Okay. But as you get further to the more complete solution, I'd love to talk to you again. Okay. I'm just going to keep plugging away. This is my first go at it. We'll see what happens. 
Everyday inventor Steve Smith is having a hard time convincing Doug that his drinks clip is an invention worth taking to Eureka Ranch. When you get into the world of, some people call them gadgets, some people call them novelties, some people call them promotional materials, getting a company to buy this is extremely difficult because there's lots of ways that you can hang cups and that kind of stuff. The, the difference with it is it goes anywhere. It goes where you go. The I know, I know. It goes here, it goes here, it the goes holder, everywhere. The holder you know, stays there. All right, stop already. I, I, yeah, I told you it's clever. The question is, can we get a larger company to buy this to put their time, energy, and money into it to make this happen? Being an injection mold maker took a hit from losing a lot of work to China. My sales went way down. I'm hoping it's something Doug could help me with. This is an extreme long shot. I'm just being very honest with you, but I like you and I like it, so I'd like you to come to the ranch. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doug. Oh, it felt great. Whew. I'm going to the ranch. Now I know there's a, there's a possibility. When we come back, there's a lot of these out there. The musk clip gets buried in a crowded market. It's been my baby for four years now. Jeez. Innovation expert Doug Hall has chosen backyard inventor Steve Smith and his drink holder for an invention makeover at Eureka Ranch. This is an extreme long shot. The question is, can we get a larger company to buy this to put their time, energy, and money into it to make this happen? Well, there's a lot riding on it as an injection mold maker. I've lost a lot of work recently to overseas. I'm hoping that is the opportunity that can get me back on my feet financially for me and my family. In just 48 hours time, Steve will get a once in a lifetime opportunity to pitch his invention to a top business executive. I'm a little nervous right now. I really have no idea what I'm in for. Let's talk about a couple things. There's a lot of these out there. Not this one, but close enough. Doug is not convinced they can transform the musk clip into a product that will sell and steer Steve towards a bigger opportunity. We have a company. They have rum products. They also have a, a very premium line of scotch whiskeys. Their problem is you go in a bar, you get a glass, and it's served to you, and it looks like everybody else's product. They want their products to come out to be noticed. Doug believes Steve's experience inventing promotional drink products could give him a leg up to cracking this. Steve is the kind of guy who knows how to take his hands and some tools and really make stuff. What we need is products that spins, floats, twists, turns. People are going to notice it and say, what's that? Steve must now decide between this challenge, to come up with innovative promotional products for whiskey and rum drinks, or spend his time at the ranch improving his must clip invention. Option A, we can take this and put all our energy into this. Option B, we could come up with hundreds of pieces of ideas. Which would you like to do? I was a little intimidated because when it was focused on the musk clip, so, and it's been my baby for four years now, I take a chance here. Do I roll the dice? Jace. So are you in? Let's do it. He believed in me as an inventor. Yeah, I think I made the right decision. The challenge is set. Over the next 48 hours, Steve will work with innovation coach Maggie Slovonic to come up with attention-grabbing promotional products for Doug's existing client. What do you got? Being able to tell which drink is yours. Keeping track of my drink. Okay. Other problems. Spill. No spills. It's a little different having to focus on just rum and whiskey. This branches out a whole nother arm. Or how about the bar cart? That would bring the bar right to your table. Maybe this will spin around came up with so many different ideas, and it's just, it's overwhelming. I can't believe it. After a few hours brainstorming, Doug weighs in. What, what are some of your favorites? I like this one here, question in the answer cup, trivia. Then you have to drink the whole glass to get to the answer. To encourage drinking to get to the answer, can't do. So I think the answer's no. Okay, okay next. I need something that nobody else can do. Um, we talked about herbs taking the edge off of your whiskey. Could have a smoky flavor. The smell of the smell of whiskey. Whiskey is smoked? Yeah, but in a bar. Steve's idea is to enhance the experience of drinking scotch whiskey by adding in an aromatic smoke that evokes the distilling process. So it could be something like smoky effect. That's pretty cool. What if we took heat? and we made a device where they could literally serve a glass and it came with this smoked. Yeah, this They're is good, random. this is good, yep. Yeah. The team has hit on a unique product, a single serving whiskey smoker. 
for whiskey, that would make people say, what? I'm not going to kid you. To start from ground zero in a day is an awful lot of work. Where we are, I'm excited. On a roll, the team goes back to the drawing board to get going on their next idea. Spills, how do you prevent spills? I want a sippy cup because people are dancing and... Okay, so the idea of the danceable yeah. cup, I like. Yeah. Sippy cup sent me to... <laughs> yeah, baby. So the question is, how can we do danceable cup? What if we made a unique thing that went into... Could this be the I've, danceable? I've, I've danced with my beer on my hip. The question is, what is the it we're putting in this? The team heads to the workshop to craft a spill-proof cup for rum drinkers. If we create a design that doesn't spill, I don't think the carbonation will be a big deal. So making a spill-proof top to it, or how about if that were a straw with a sealed top? A straw. This built-in straw means the lid won't need to be removed for sipping. So now you can jiggle all you want, and you're not going to get any leak out of this. I don't think so. The musquip is still alive, which uh, is just exciting. For their third idea, the team sticks to targeting rum drinkers and crack open the dry ice. Right now, the technical term for this is messing around. It is the true essence of invention. I'm looking at this thing here. It could have a, a dry ice insert in the bottom of your glass. That's cool. Or what about this way? You can do that. Right. Yeah, so uh, yeah. Little... So it's a show-stopping presentation of a rum standard with a twist. A reinvention of the pina colada. So, I mean, we've got a bunch of ideas. They range from bubbling cauldrons to make for cool tropical drinks to ones where you can get your scotch extra peaty to now you can literally dance with your drink. I've got them building up some final prototypes. Steve now has three solid ideas to pitch to Doug's client, but first he must test them in the real world. Tomorrow, a panel of consumers will decide whether these ideas have what it takes to create a stir in the drinks industry. Tomorrow, it's pretty easy for people to turn around and just say, oh, they're just a bunch of gimmicks, I don't want it. I'm a little concerned about that. Well, I think with tomorrow's testing, there's gonna be a lot of pressure to make it go well. But and I think uh, we're gonna get some good feedback on it. I really do. When we come back, Steve faces the sobering truth. I don't think really any of those things are really going to drive in a bar. At his Eureka Ranch, Doug Hall has given everyday inventor Steve Smith a unique opportunity. We have a company. They have rum products, a very premium line of Scotch whiskeys. Steve has spent a full day cooking up dramatic promotional ideas to wow a crowd in a bar. What about this way? I mean, that's pretty cool. And along the way, he has reinvented his musk clip into a holder for taking a drink onto the dance floor. Today, a panel of consumers will decide whether Steve's ideas pack enough punch to make a splash on the bar scene or if they fizzle out here. I'm nervous because there is a lot riding on this. This is a make or break situation. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming. So with the consumer research today, what I'm really hoping to get is a fresh reality check. Are we in the game or not? So the first one is called Whiskey Aromatica. It's a simple system that allows you to drink with your nose and taste buds. So this would be something similar to the presentation that the server would come to your table with. You can wait and let it linger for more time to get more of the peatiness. Then you can release it, and all of that aromatic smell of the peat would come through. Ah, it smells good. Scotch, it got my mouth hot watering. I wanted one right then and there. The flavor, man, the flavor. The way it works is there's a little piece of that authentic peat that was used inside the whiskey, and it's, it lives in this little drawer. It's been lit so that it can keep burning. How likely would you be to buy this product if it was available? Uh, it's a little different. It looks kind of funky, and I could see maybe it might be nice for somebody that likes to, the aroma of scotch. Next up is Steve's new take on the pina colada. Introducing the Smoke Show Skinny Colada. OK, we've got your coconut shell cup holder. And it's activated a bit to start the misting. And then you've got a skinny colada mixed up. And it's served something like this. Once women see something like that, they will just go nuts. I can guarantee you that. It's, it's unique. It's like flowy. It's pretty. Oh, yeah, look at me. I got this. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a hit. I don't know. I think I'd want to stay away from the dry ice myself. Pina colada one. Yeah. It's all very sort of mystical almost. And finally, introducing Jazz Hands drink holder. It's time for Steve to sell this crowd on the new use for his musk clip. The only cup designed to give you full freedom of expression on the dance floor without spilling a sip of your drink. 
Explain how this works, Steve. Well, there you go. You can clip it on your belt. You're up there dancing. Where you go. Sexy sprinkler, sexy sprinkler. I've had this problem for many years, dancing while drinking, and it spills all over you. I, mean, I think the fact that you can hook it onto your pants is an awesome idea. Kind of cute, I thought, because, you know, there are, you do like to get up and boogie sometimes. And... So at the bottom of that, please put your age and sex. I probably wasn't the demographic. I'm beyond that. <laughs> the results here are critical to Steve's success. And back at the ranch, Doug reveals how each product scored out of 10. The magic number that we're looking for is a weighted score is 6.0. To see which of the ideas are strong enough to pitch to Doug's client in the boardroom tomorrow. Number one was the Scotch Aromatics at a incredible 8.2. Number two, Skinny Colada, 7.3. Number three, Jazz, the must clip, 5.8, below six. Just under. But just underneath. Then my question is, do we want to present jazz or not? It was on the bubble, and I thought, if it's on the bubble, let's push it. It's that close, so let's do it. Let's go for it. You will be presenting to John Muldoon, is in charge of innovation for Edrington. You may know them better by their products. They include the Macallan, Highland Park, Famous Grouse, along with Cuddy Sark and others. So we can't just be good, we got to be great. I am in. Now, I also did some math. These ideas will generate somewhere between five and $10 million in sales at bars. Okay. Wow. Holy shit. Sorry. <laughs> wow. I've struggled for years to try and get what I believe in out there, and holy cow, what a game changer. And just working paycheck to paycheck, and the potential that is here, this is so much to take in right now. It's now all riding on Steve to give the performance of his life in the boardroom tomorrow. Best way to get started is to just jump in. Let's give me your best pitch. So walk in, pretend I'm John. Hello, John. My name is Steve Smith. I'm from Muskoka, Ontario. I, I, I am overthinking. Own my own, own with my. This journey has been incredible. If this becomes a reality, then I've actually finally made it. <laughs> okay, try again. Okay. I'm nervous because there is a lot riding on this. Okay. When we come back, Steve dries up under pressure. Why would you start focus on the dry ice? But it's quite dangerous to work with. At Eureka Ranch, Steve Smith has journeyed from being an out-of-luck injection mold maker to a full-fledged inventor. I've lost a lot of work recently to overseas. I'm hoping that is the opportunity that can get me back on my feet financially for me and my family. Steve now has a raft of promotional drink innovations under his belt. You're up there dancing. Where you go? To pitch to a worldwide producer and distributor of exclusive specialty liquors. This is huge because this is a, an opportunity that I haven't had. It's just so many emotions and, and it's a big deal to me and my family. John Muldoon is the innovation manager for the Edrington Group. It's his job to constantly find new ways to market the group's five leading brands of scotch whiskey and rum. Well, I'm here today to introduce you to new products that will help generate a word-of-mouth buzz for your brands in a bar. Wow, I was expecting to hear one thing. <laughs> I'm going to have to take a lot of notice. <laughs> we are going to start with to the Smoke Show Skinny Colada. This is a deliciously light pina colada drink that is mixed and put in a smoking coconut that just demands attention. You put dry ice in the bottom, and a screen snaps down into place to hold the dry ice in so it doesn't spill out. Then the bartender adds the water to it, gets the smoke show going. Then the skinny colada is slipped into the smoking coconut and then delivered to the patron. Wow, and why did you start focus on the dry ice? That's interesting. It can be very atmospheric, but it also can be quite dangerous to work with. It can be, but that's why the screen is in there to hold it and contain it inside. It snaps into place. Okay. It's something that we'll have to work through. Okay. The safety thing needs to be recognized. That does. Okay. Next. This is good for a dance club. The Jazz Hand drink holder that you can simply put on your belt. Now you can do the sexy sprinkler, sexy sprinkler, sexy sprinkler. 
<laughs> put it in your pocket, you can put it up on your top. Allows for hands-free on the dance floor. It comes with a straw for easy accessibility and to aid in the release of any CO2. And would you expect to have, I mean, most bars, for example, it's their glasses, so is that going to work with a glass bottle rather than, say, a flash thing? Just in terms of people having glass around their waist. Yeah. It would probably not be able to be glass. It would be some sort of a plastic. OK, the next one's a fun one as well, John. Introducing the Whiskey Aromatica. The server would light the peat inside the smoker, and as it comes up and shrouds the whiskey, it's delivered to the patron. They unveil it, and they are uh, immersed in the scent of the peat. Yeah, wow. So blown away with the, <laughs> the smoking gun. And you've not seen anything else like this? No. It's, it's amazing, actually, somebody hasn't thought of that before. So does the whiskey then taste more smoky? It starts to pick it up, but okay. it's as much in the nose. Much in the nose. But it's really, as you know, it's a nose. The sensation is a lot more. OK. It's clear there's been a ton of work. I'm very, very impressed with that. Steve. The Jazz Hands one is no. The other ones offer much more of a visual wow factor. If you see somebody having that drink, you'd want to copy that. OK, so that's a big thing. And the answer's yes. Terrific effort. Thank you. Yeah, terrific. That's great. Oh, wow. I feel great. Ten feet tall. I hit it out of the park. I nailed it. Looking Thank you. It's terrific. The sheer diversity of the ideas, where I was very, very impressed. What I'd like to do with them now is, is actually get any number of working prototypes, and then I could see those ideas making through commercialization. Steve has made an incredible journey, and we've rocketed him forward. He'll get a contract from John to develop him further. And I think Steve's business is moving forward quickly. <laughs> This means tons to me. Things are slow, struggling, barely getting by, and the wife's flipping the bill when I'm not working. And this will change everything. That's awesome. That is just awesome. Woohoo! <laughs> Visit us online, wnetwork.com slash backyardinventors.